to another edition of High School Lowdown for Jeff Bird and Ernest Boker. I'm Steve Wilson. Porter's Chapel is going to be making the short trip over to Riverfield, Brayville to be exact, to open the Class 1A playoffs. Yeah, it's uh, the reward for beating Prentice Christian last week. They would have had to travel down to Woodville, which is about two hours away if they would have lost. So, uh, much easier trip. Hopefully they bring a lot of fans to support them. Uh, going in with some momentum after a big win over Prentice, 40-14 last week. Well, now that Jonah Masterson's back in the fold, now they have a more dynamic offense, and it's not Peter Harris left, Peter Harris right, Peter Harris up the middle. Right, but Peter Harris is still their guy. I mean, he, he if, if you shut him down, you're going to probably shut them down. He's, he's what makes them go. But having Jonah back, what that's going to do for him is at least give him another threat there, another threat of the passing game. Even if you don't throw a lot, if you can throw, if you can – make them think you're going to throw, it's going to open things up for, for Peter in the running game. I love the old coaches saw the old, well, he's our bell cow, and we just go right to him. I mean, talk about Peter Harris. I mean, you talk about a bell cow, that guy, his stats are just amazing. Right, he's up to almost just under 1,400 yards amazing. now, 25 total touchdowns, 19 rushing, some more receiving and kick returns. Uh, he's been their do-it-all guy, and uh Certainly one of the better players we've seen in this area this year, at least one of the better seasons certainly we've seen this this year. St. Aloysius will be hosting Mount Olive in the season finale for both teams. And St. Al is coming off a big loss to Boga Chitta, and they played a ton of young guys. What did you see from them, Jeff? Well, I thought they had a very impressive last drive. It was quarterback Will Pierce drove the, completed five passes to about four different guys and looked really sharp back there. And then uh, when they got down to the 20-yard line, they handed the ball twice to a junior running back, uh, Douglas Basari. He scored on a seven-yard run. So, like I said, that was a, the, the, the big bright spot for them was how well those guys played. Well, they played a lot of young players since their junior high and their, their junior high season ended. Do you feel like that's something that they can use to build for the future? Oh, very much so. Like I said, uh, they're only losing... You know, the two main seniors, Sage Lewis and uh, Elliot, Elliot Bexley. After that, everybody else is back. Most of the linemen, um, like four offensive linemen coming back. Nine of the 11 defensive starters are back. So they have a lot to look forward to. Well, speaking of that, I talked to uh, Coach B.J. Smithart about the future of his team and how a uh, win over Mount Olive might be a good springboard going into the offseason. Well, Coach Smithard, uh, last week was a tough one for you. How did Bogachita compare with some of the teams that you played this season so far? They're really good. I rank them up there with the, uh, the Puckets and Mount Olives in the past. They, uh, they're going to make a strong strong run this year, and they'll be in it to the, to the end. And uh, Somebody's going to have to go through them um, to, to win it. Well, you brought up a lot of kids from the junior high ranks. You're kind of you're kind of doing a good job of building for the future. Talk about the experience that a lot of these young guys are getting going into these game situations and what that can do for you going forward. Well, not only the, the game situations, but we wanted to have an idea of how practices will run next year and what they can expect and uh, just, just kind of see the difference in, in speed. And right now they're kind of all blown away by the, the, the speed of the game. But, you know, some of them, you know, Ben Brown was able to come in there and play some for us Friday. And, uh, Anytime you play against the number one team in the state, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, it doesn't matter. It's always a memorable experience. I just wish it would have been a, a better one for us. Well, you've had a pretty decent rivalry with Mount Olive over the years. You've kind of gotten the upper hand. Is is a win Friday going to be a big boost for your guys going into this offseason? Yeah, I mean, you know, anytime you can end on a high note, you, you want to. And, you know, you, know, you just want to win. It doesn't matter first game, last game. Doesn't matter. You want to win, and uh, we got, you know, three seniors who've been with us for four years, and uh, we, we really want to do it for them. They, they've done a good job for the program. Well, Warren Central got, makes the short trip over to Jackson to play Jim Hill, and they're coming off an uh, unintentional bye week. Right with the uh, Vicksburg mess over there, um, not intended to do it, but it, it kind of helped them. Helps Warren Central a little bit. It really gave them a much easier path to the playoffs. And they got a chance to scout Jim Hill. Uh, got to see him play Murrah last week and uh, probably give him a little bit of a leg up on preparation at the very least. Well, Warren Central, uh, it's kind of a, the, the playoff seating situation here is unique because you and I were talking about how Jim Hill 
If they win, they can lock up the second seed. If not, they're going to fall all the way down to the bottom. Right. They could be second or fourth. They cannot be third, which it sounds weird, but the way the tiebreakers will work. Or they could miss it entirely. Uh, if Northwest Rankin beats Murrah and Warren Central beats Jim Hill, the way the tiebreakers work, uh, Jim Hill would fall out. Uh, if Jim Hill wins, they're second no matter what else happens. Warren Central is in the playoffs no matter what else happens. It uh, really depends on what Northwest Rankin does against Murr as much as what happens at Newell Field Friday night with WC and Jim Hill. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of High School Lowdown. For Ernest Boker and Jeff Bird, I'm Steve Wilson. Be sure to ha check out all the happenings at VicksburgPost.com. You can also go there on Friday nights for scoring updates. Or you can follow us on Twitter at VixPostSports, and that's V-I-X Post Sports. Thanks and have a great day.